Today on Rexray, we're going to talk about Philips Lumify handheld ultrasound. Recently, I've been searching for handheld ultrasound to do bedside paras and thoras. Started by going to the Philips website and taking a look at what they had to offer. On the website, you can see there are three different ultrasound probes. The S4 is essentially a cardiac probe. The linear 12 is the small parts and vascular probe. And the curved 5 is a body probe. The S4 has the smallest footprint, which is good for getting in those peristernal areas. And a pretty reasonable depth of 24 centimeters. The Linear 12 has a long and skinny footprint of 34 millimeters, providing high resolution with a short 12 centimeter depth. And the C5 has a big ol' footprint with deep imaging up to 30 centimeters, exactly what we're looking for in a body probe. All of these devices have grayscale, color, and M mode, but what is X-Res and Sono CT? X-Res is essentially the way that the ultrasound data is compounded into a picture and displayed using algorithms to sharpen borders and smooth tissues. Sono CT is Philips' brand of compound imaging. Basically, it uses multiple beams to sample the tissue and compound it into a single image. Having chosen the C5, I requested a demo, put in my information, and before I knew it, it was here. It came in a nice quality bag with a strap, a Android tablet, the C5 Lumify ultrasound, and a USB-C charging cable. The device is technically supported by both Android and Apple. However, it strongly favors Android devices because the Lumify does not have an internal battery and it requires power from the USB-C. If you do have an Apple device, you will have to use something called an LPM, which is a Lumify power module. It's basically an external battery with a lightning connector. Once you hook that on, it works just like normal and it does have a battery level indicator. The probe itself is quite light, weighing approximately 212 grams. As you can see, it is a wired ultrasound with a nice long cable, one of the longest I've seen on a handheld actually. The body is a lightweight plastic with a very mild texture that makes it easier to grip. I never figured out what this little gray bar is, but maybe someone on Twitter can tell me. It is very easy to clean and the only place where dirt would gather would be in the little side notch. Using the device is very easy. Once you plug it in, you can use a preset such as abdomen, lung, gallbladder, and obgyne. The preset options will of course change depending on what type of probe you plug in. From there, you can make further adjustments. The C5 can go as shallow as 1 cm and going the opposite direction as deep as 30 cm. You can change the brightness of the image from 0 to 100 with the gain knob. The color flow has two settings, fast and slow. You can move the color box with one finger and change the size of it with two fingers. When in this mode, the gain wheel will now adjust your velocity scale. At any point, you can record a five second video clip with the save loop button. The length of the video does not seem to be adjustable. After hitting the power button, you can use one finger to change the location of the sampler and then hit the power button again. This will bring you into a spectral Doppler setting, which will be a graphical display of velocities. Here, you'll be able to adjust the velocity scale and the gain. The grayscale image is frozen during sampling, so be sure not to move your hand and malalign the sampling region. At any point, you can swipe over the menu and save an image. You can also change the speed that the spectral Doppler is displayed from slow, medium, and fast. The last feature I want to show you is M mode. As you can see, the grayscale image continues to run during this mode. You can adjust the depth and gain to focus on different features, and the dotted line in the middle of the grayscale area will show you which area is being displayed. When you freeze the image, you then have the option to measure, annotate, or take a saved picture for archive. You can adjust the measure by moving one crosshair at a time. This feature is most commonly utilized in obstetrics to calculate fetal heart rate. The annotate button will bring up a keyboard. You can move your annotation anywhere on the image. There are three ways to put your patient ID in. The first is to hit the quick ID button. The second is to hit the edit patient info from the main menu. And the third is to create patient from the start screen. If you have some saved exams that you want to export, all you have to do is select the session, review the images, make sure they're what you want, 
and then hit the export exam at the top. You can choose to export directly to your tablet's hard drive, or you can send it in email, as long as you have an internet connection. All patient identifiers will be automatically removed. The email option will generate attachments with pictures ranging from 160 kilobytes to videos ranging 1.4 megabytes. If you're doing a local export, you have the option of file types between PNG, MP4, DICOM, and JPEG. In the advanced options, you can change the resolution, brightness, contrast, and include the patient data should you want it. There are many more settings to play with, but honestly, the Philips website has pretty good video tutorials. They're just in a really hard to find location. The quality of images are good for a handheld ultrasound. The echo texture of the liver is well visualized from front to back. The vessels are clear to see and the portal fat is identified. The high flow setting clearly shows the direction of portal flow and the low flow setting is appropriately overwhelmed by portal flow. But the slow flow setting does fill out this intrahepatic IVC. The origin and angles of the celiac and SMA are identified. However, this clarity wouldn't be possible on a larger patient. The branches of the aorta could be seen on axial imaging and on slow flow. The hepatic veins and IVC would also light up. The footprint of the curved probe is a little bit big for cardiac imaging, but it does an acceptable job. We can make basic observation of the valve's flow and if any effusions were present. These images are from the Philips website using the S4 transducer, and you can see the clarity provided with the echo presets. Here is a view of a bladder, uterus, with an IUD. Ovaries can be difficult for most abdominal ultrasounds, but here's one with a functional cyst. Curved probes are not designed for small parts, but it does its best to image the thyroid and adjacent vessels. Here's an example image from ESR which shows good resolution of small parts with their linear ultrasound. For a handheld, I do think it's quite good at imaging the kidney, assessing the parenchyma, looking for renal cysts, and excluding hydronephrosis. It's also pretty good at detecting parenchymal blood flow, especially with the slow flow setting. What it was not good at is detecting renal artery stenosis. I just couldn't get a good image of the renal artery origins. The bladder is just a big bag of water, so of course it excelled at imaging that structure. And lastly, here's some pleura sliding of a well aerated lung. The Lumify was super handy and portable on bedside procedures, but you do need to make sure that your tablet or LPM is fully charged, as there's no way to plug it in when you get to the bedside. They say it has about five hours of battery life, but it depends on what device is powering it. Either way, it was always more than enough to complete a procedure. In summary, Philips Lumify is an excellent handheld ultrasound, both for its diagnostic images and to use as a bedside procedural ultrasound. Thanks for watching.